Okay. Oh. All right, the lights on. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Derek. Um, I firstly, I would like to tell you that I will be lying to you if I say that I'm not nervous. I am nervous as hell. But you know what? The show's got to go on, right? <laughs> okay. So um, I'm here to share with you a topic that um, I feel strongly about. Um, it's a topic that a lot of people know. It's a topic that a lot of people think they know. But it's also a topic that a lot of people don't really understand. And uh, this topic I am telling you about is about big data. Okay? And you notice that the word morality is there. So I'm going to get to that very pretty soon. Big data. A lot of people think it, you know what it is, but do actually people truly understand what it is? I like what Dan Ariel said from Duke University to say that big data is like human sex. Everybody is talking about it, and nobody really knows how to do it. So everybody thinks that everyone else is doing it, so everyone claims that they are doing it. Question is, are you doing it? Big data, I mean, not, not, not the other thing, right? So. Um, you know, when I talk about big data, I don't like to talk too much about the technical jargon. Um, I just want to share with you all what I feel big data is. And I'm going to do it in the simplest manner possible. I try. Uh, students will disagree with me, of course, but I will try. Big data is part of our life, whether we like it or not. It has been here without us even knowing it. It will continue to be here without us even understanding it. And more important, it has changed our lives without us even realizing it. So I'm going to ask you this. Do you answer yes to these following questions? Do you own a social media account? Oh, you're not supposed to answer. Anyway, thank you for answering. <laughs> so good students, aren't they? <laughs> Have you bought anything online or anything with a loyalty card that gives you a receipt? No? Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever filled up an online form? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> then you know what? All of you are now contributors of big data. Because large corporations is going to thank you for this because they're using all that information to collect and collate it and then form pattern recognitions about who you are, what you do, and more importantly, how you do it. So let me give you a simple example of using big data or marketing intelligence using Facebook. So let's all think about our own Facebook account. What do we have in our Facebook account? Who you are, right? Your profile. Who your friends are, definitely. You have, what, 1,000 friends? Where have you been? How do you feel about something or even someone? And if you have been to any events, then you'll probably be posting up pictures, you'll be posting up where you are, what you're doing, how you feel about it, and so on and so forth. And do you know with that post, what have you just done? You have basically told the world what is your most preferred thing. You have basically said that you are asking people to tailor that most preferred thing specifically to you and market it to a place that is convenient to you. And more importantly, Corporations are using this information to get you to recommend it to your friends. Ooh. That's your Facebook account, ladies and gentlemen. Even for me, I am guilty of contributing to big data as well. Just by buying something, by the way, this is a receipt uh, of me buying a suit, not this suit, of course, from G2000 in 2011. And if you notice that from this one single receipt, Coupled with my loyalty card, I have already given them this information. 
I have given them the product association of the things that I buy together. I have given them my customer behavior analysis. I've given them when I shop and where I shop. And I've also tagged it to who I am, which is the demographic segmentation. So can you imagine if there was one million of these transactions put together, what would they achieve? They would be able to achieve a pattern recognition that would give them the tools to do targeted marketing to increase their profit with the least amount of expenditure possible. What does that mean? That means we are indirectly helping them companies to make more profit easily from our own consumption. Are we actually contributing to this environment? Well, in a uh, research by IBM in 2014 says that we are. We are actually spending in one day 50 million tweets online. We are actually sending about 700 billion Facebook minutes. 700 billion. Just one day. And we are spending about 1.3 exabytes of data using our social media connections. For those of you who are not techie, exabyte take one megabyte and power it to six. That is one exabyte. That's a whole lot of data. That's probably about, let's say, six million movies. And in that same research, shows that we are uploading about 20 hours of video and we are buying about 72.9 items per hour on Amazon. Now, that's a lot of information floating up. So with all this information, Doug Laney, who, was the, uh, who is actually the VP of um, Gartner from research, did an article on Forbes magazine in 2015, earlier this year, and said this. By 2020, the information that we are giving out is going to reinvent digitalize and eliminate about 80% of the processes and the products of from more than a decade ago. So what does this mean? This means that we are actually helping the industry to solicit more information, source more data storage to put on cloud, of course all of you store things on cloud, and we are also helping them to invest in higher analytical tools so that they can get more pattern recognition and they can do better targeted marketing. But let me ask you a question. Is this getting too serious? Is this getting too large for us to control? Just ponder. That means pondering. We now with a single transaction online, has the ability to judge more quickly with greater accuracy, with the least amount of time, and with greater impact. Is this necessarily a good thing? What about businesses? Can businesses also make big data mistakes? And if they do make data, big data mistakes, what impact does it have on society, on us? if it's not used properly. Take, for example, and I'm sure a lot of you know this example. Uh, oh, sorry, before that. <laughs> the dilemma that we're discussing here was actually discussed in March 17 last year. The Data Research Society and uh, in the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy and NYU Law Institute, they convened a special session on social, cultural, and actual dimensions of big data. And they said that they wanted to examine what was the social, cultural, and ethical dimensions of big data in terms of from the civil society, who are the key stakeholders, and what do they feel is the impact across government as well as civil society. So the thing that came up from this meeting was that there was more legal and economical and ethical political questions that were unanswered rather than questions that came up. Meaning that this is so big 
that it's going to take us a lot of time and effort to really understand what it is all about. I don't truly really fully understand it myself. So, the is now, where is the moral high ground in using big data for businesses and even for ourselves? So take, for example, Target. Target inadvertently embarrassed a girl by sending her congratulatory notes and coupons for uh, baby formula when her father did not know that she was pregnant because they tracked her buying habits uh, of prenatal vitamins and also baby diapers. And that really, really embarrassed her because the father found out that she was pregnant when the father didn't know. So can you imagine how it would have destroyed? Also, we ask ourselves, because Target can do this, can we also make bad decisions? And do to make bad decisions based on bad interpretations of data. You all remember this movie, Minority Report? This is exactly what I'm talking about. Are you going to convict a person of a crime before they even committed it? Let me give you a personal example. I'm a big user of Facebook. This is my Facebook account. I have a friend who I've not seen for a very, very long time. We've reconnected in 10 years ago, uh, for 10 years. But we've never actually came out to meet each other and reconnect because we always assume that, oh, the pictures that he posts, the pictures that I post, we are doing fine, we're doing well. So, in a way, we were over-reliant on the uh, data that we put up on our social media. But I was shocked to find out that he recently passed away. And this really made me feel a lot of regret, a lot of over over reliance on data. And therefore, I feel that I have put my money on the wrong course, if that was the term. So are we doomed? But there's a saving grace. Kaplan, Friedrich Kaplan, from the Society of uh, Frontier and Digital Humanities, uh, Humanities, said that we must have a understanding of the challenges and the contextualization of our world, ourselves, and our data with a little bit more humanity. In research, we advocate that we need to have a more immersive and a more responsive system when we program our analytics and also where we collect and sort our data together. So, he's advocating that the structures we have in big data must have a new understanding of the data that we collect, the interdependencies of the data sources that we are going to collect it from, as well as the actualization of the digital experiences from data. So what this means is, imagine if we could ask Siri, you all know Siri, yeah, she's a very good companion, isn't she? Imagine if we could ask Siri, Siri, can you please tell me where Chesco One Canada is? And she not only tells you where it is, but she shows you a Google map of where it is. Quite immersive, quite good. So imagine the potential of this new system. Well, not to that extent, I hope. Yeah? None of you are falling in love with Siri, right? Okay, just checking. So where does that leave us? Clearly, we have a long way more to go. Clearly, there's a lot more that we need to understand. And clearly, there's a lot more that we don't know. With the speed and space of technology moving forward, it leaves us with three things that we need to ask ourselves. First, to the consumers. Ask yourself, what do you need? And always be wary of what you put out, because it will come back to you mistakenly. I, sorry, unwillingly. Just like the girl from Target. To the companies, I urge the companies to be more intelligent and be wary of what you ask because it will come back to you mistakenly, just like Target. And what about you guys, the society? We need to come together to understand 
and be sensitive to the changes that big data is going to happen to our lives, it's going to change our lives, and be ready to make adjustments if needed in our education, in our civil society, in our own humanity. Because if we don't and allow this to just overwhelm us, it will lead us to a place where we do not want to be. I do not know where that place is. And I'm sure you do not want to be there as well. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for listening to my talk.